Well, hello, virtual conventioneers. I'm so excited and thrilled today to talk with you about something that's near and dear to my heart and hopefully will be near and dear to your heart after you've seen this conversation, if it's not already. Today, we're going to talk about Stipe's Woolen Miniatures. Now, Woolen Miniatures are teeny, tiny little creations made by Stife starting in the early 1930s. Now the reason Stife made these in the 1930s was to correspond to a business strategy. Now what was happening at Stife and in Germany and pretty much the world at that time, it wasn't so great. There was a lot of geopolitical issues going on and the average person didn't have a lot of money to spend on toys and playthings. So what Stife did is they took their business strategy in two totally different directions. One direction was to create really high-end toys, and these would be things like tail moves head items and very snap jointed items and elaborate expensive items. So they made a bunch of those for people who still had money. But the vast majority of people didn't have money but still wanted to buy an occasional toy or treat or favor or present for someone. And so what they came up with was these tiny woolen miniature animals. And these came out in the very early 1930s. And what these really were is exactly what their name describes. They're teeny tiny little pom-pom animals. And they are truly made out of wool, woolen fibers. Now, like, you know, on the top of your hat, you might have a pom-pom, or on a jacket, you might have a pom-pom. But this is literally made out of pom-poms. And Stife made these to fill that lower-end market segment um, in the 1930s onward. These actually were produced through the 1980s, but we'll talk about that. These early ones were just really phenomenal. They're made out of a heavy wool, many... They're often different colored and such. And despite their teeny tiny proportions, so this little guy, so here's my hand, here's the guy. You see, like he's the size of my thumb. So if you look at your hand, this is what we're talking about. Despite the fact that this little tiny guy, who's one of the very first woolen miniatures that Stife produced, is only the size of my thumb. He's made out of one, two, three pom-poms. He's head-jointed, colorful, has metal, legs that are painted, a beak, these eyes, they're not just like popped into his head, they're sewn into his head and very secure. Stife wanted to make sure that not only could people collect these and use these for things like table vignettes and to put with dolls and toys and such, but actually the children could play for them with them. So they're very sturdy and they're very childproof. And this lovely little felt comb. So this little pom-pom came out this little guy came out in the very early 1930s in a number of different sizes, and these proved really, really successful. So the very earliest Stife woolen miniatures were things like bunnies. And you can see this lovely little bunny, which is made out of, he has his little tiny pom-pom tail, two pom-pom arms. He's two different colors, but these came in white and brown and black and different colors, um, all assorted wonderful woolen ears, and again, eyes that were put right into his head. Delightful, charming pieces. Again, this little guy, here's my hand. He's like, size of my thumb this way, but half my thumb this way. Beautiful. A little pom-pom. And also, we had birds, bunnies, and also these types of birds, these little songbirds. This is a great piece. This is a golden bunting, which was only produced pre-war. And again, you see this really adorable presentation, wonderful coloring, and if you think about how a bird's feathers look, how they blend and the colors are so nice, you see that here as well. And so this little guy has his felt tail, felt beak, built-in eyes, the, f the legs, and such. And if you look at the different birds, here's a little finch, here's a little blue tit, and they all, the birds with the metal legs, would have these ankle bracelets, not like criminals, but like Stife miniatures, the tag wrapped around their legs with a little button. And you can see that's how these little birds were marked as Stife because they didn't have ears, clearly, but adorable. The bunny has her button in her felt ear. And this chick would have had a little bracelet here. This is one of the earliest pom-pom animals produced, and I just love her. I found her at a, a, a doll 
event, and I just couldn't believe she was sitting in the case, and there she was. But if you think about these small miniatures, how darling they are, and how wonderful they would look in the arms of dolls, or how wonderful they would look as vignettes for an Easter celebration, or a Christmas celebration, or a new baby, or a birthday. Just wonderful, wonderful little birds. So these were the first woolen miniatures. Now, we're going to talk about the timeline. So Steiff realized how popular these were. These things just hit the roof in excitement. People love them. So Steiff went from these sort of basic ones and started to produce really fun items. And let me show you this wonderful woolen miniature. Now this one is about the size of, oh, I'd say, like, a pool ball or an apricot. He's a little bit bigger, but still wonderful coloration. Look at the wonderful coloring and the detail on him despite his size. He has pom-pom feet, wonderful felt tail, red felt comb, and these wonderful glass googly eyes. And his little button, it's okay to look where the sun don't shine, is right here on the bottom of his tail feathers. You see his little tiny button. And despite his size and his relatively inexpensive construction, also head jointed. Imagine him in the arms of like a farmer little boy. So adorable. And another one of my favorites is this pom pom duck. Crazy. He's got a little pom pom on his head, and someone has told me that some ducks do have that in life, so it's not unusual that Stipe would replicate that in this little pom pom. He's got this flappy little beak, and his feet, his button would have been in his feet, but these are adorable. He even has a little airbrushing detail. So, the line continues. These continue to sell really well, despite the poor economic times in Germany. These are very popular. They're given as gifts for children for birthdays. They're party favors. They're gifts for adults. They're just fun gifts. And they're not expensive. When Stipe launched these, they were about 30 cents each, which is um, wonderful. And when you think about what they sell for today, that would have been quite a bargain to buy many of them then. So one of my favorite types of woolen miniatures, and I know our friends in London are going to love these, are woolen miniatures wearing slippers. So Steiff did a lot of these fun little novelties with the woolen miniatures. And if you look at these woolen miniatures, here we have a bunny, here we have a mouse, and here we have a beetle. And for example, you see the beetle with his wonderful coloring his funny little begging arms. He even has his antenna. That's not bad. Look at this guy. He's like an inch. Very sweet. And he's got, well, I call them slippers, but they might be clogs. Here in Cambridge, we might think of them as clogs. And he's got his button and tag around his leg. Absolutely darling. Could these be more precious? So Steiff made these with slippers, and they also made them with little hats. They made a wonderful raven with a hat on it, and they made wonderful uh, animals in clothing, for instance, dressed as a bridal couple. So these wonderful woolen miniatures, often done in boys and girl pairs, and also in different colors. Really fun, and so much delightful. These today sell for the hundreds or thousands of dollars because they're so rare and so ephemeral. If you see one, buy one. Fabulous. Steiff continued with the woolen miniature line, and it proved very, very successful on a number of levels. So we've gone from basic designs to fun designs to designs wearing accessories and such. Steiff then started to create a series of woolen miniatures like this fabulous parrot. And what I want you to see about the parrot is not only can you see the wonderful coloring and the effects of feathers in the back, so he's a combination of wonderful Nomada wool, which is wool that is moth resistant, and his wonderful tail feathers. So Steiff took the best of all its world, it's known for these wonderful animals, but also for woodworking, and created a parrot on a stand. This is all original. And he's just charming. This is one of my favorite pieces. I love birds, so this is probably my closest thing I'll ever have to one in my life, in my collection. And what you see here also is this wonderful green stand. And Steiff did a lot of things like this um, as congratulators. And a congratulator was woolen miniatures posed on 
these green wooden stands, there'd be a blank piece of paper in front where you could write something, like there was two little um, birds dressed as a bride and groom, and you might want to write congratulations on your wedding, or happy anniversary, or best of luck. They had a whole bunch of these different types of woolly miniatures on these stands, and people love those. Those congratulators um, today could be thousands and thousands of dollars because they're so ephemeral. The lace tends to fall apart on the, on the bridal gown or the shoes fall off, but they're really quite lovely and quite wonderful for both stife collectors, doll collectors. Imagine this in a doll house and a room box. They're just wonderful. So in addition to these type of accessories, just before World War II, Stipe also used these woolen miniatures on things like ink wipes and um, pin cushions and on the, 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 the weebly wobbly toys. They also put them on other toys for children. So they used these woolen miniatures throughout their line to not only as its own line, but as a clearly decorative items, play items, fun items. They're just wonderful. And the pre-war ones especially resonate with a lot of collectors because of their ephemeral qualities and their sort of the absolutely beautiful way they were constructed. So that is the pre-war story. So what I'm going to talk to you about now is what happened after World War II. And Stife Bull Adventures, of course, came right back onto the scene because they were extremely popular with collectors and, again, seemed to be a great business line for Stife. So, right after World War II, Stife re reintroduced a number of its legacy designs that were pre-war. And so, for instance, what you're going to see here wonderful roosters and hens. Now look how funny they are. This design didn't change much from the um, pre-war to the post-war phase. And post-war you're still going to see the metal legs and the little bracelets with the, with the buttons on them. Aren't they adorable? You might also see wonderful ducks. Look at the coloration. And the detailing, it's astonishing. There's a tiny bit of red felt behind these black button eyes on these wonderful feet. And these feet are duck-like with their wonderful curves. You're also going to see this little bitty baby ducks. How cute is this? This is so tiny. That's like an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. Imagine that in the arms of a tiny little doll or just sort of peeking over a room in a dollhouse. Adorable. One of my favorites, it says that this has astonishing coloration. This is even smaller than an inch. This is probably three quarters of an inch. And just look at the coloring and the airbrushing and the detailing on this teeny tiny chick. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. So, how do you know how to date these pre and post war? Well, for the birds, and here are some more birds. These are all post-war birds. But for instance, this is a little bird with the metal feet. This bird has plastic feet. And so in 1956, birds like these, the songbirds, went from metal feet to plastic feet. So if you find plastic feet on a songbird, it is most likely from about 1956 onward. And you can see subtle differences in the way the earlier versus the later birds are. A little bit more streamlined, a little less. This is The wool is thicker, it's a little squishier here, a little rounder face and such. For the most part, the design doesn't change, but there are subtle differences for the most part, for lack of a better term, the older ones have an old-fashioned quality to them. These look a little bit more 70s and fluffy. You can see the difference in the faces and the proportions. But it is the same model. This is a robin. Okay. Now for the hens and the chicks and the roosters and the ducks, in 1971, they went from metal feet to plastic feet. So that's another way to help date these because these were in the line for a really long time. And the little ducklings and the little chicks changed from metal to plastic feet in about 19, 
59. So the 50s for the smaller ones and 70s for the larger ones. So that's how one of the ways you can tell. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So let me go over some fun designs from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. A swan, how beautiful. What a lovely gift to give to somebody for a bridal shower. And on the same kind of design is this wonderful duck. And they have these necks that are bendable. And they have what's called double thick felt on the feet. Their feet are made out of felt that's not one layer, it's two layer. This is a single layer and a double layer thick felt. So a similar design. And interestingly, the swan has its button and tag in the wing, and the duck has it in its feet. So they show up in a number of places. A lovely favorite, a little penguin, again with double thick felt feet. A funny little beak. He has his button in his arm. Isn't he darling? How cute with a polar bear or an Eskimo. Wouldn't love that. A super weird crazy one, which I love, is a beetle. A little bit strange. This is from the 70s. He's got like a plastic bottom. A big, I don't know if that's a head or a nose. Antennas. That's a woolen miniature. Not sure where you'd put that, but they're very rare. People seem to love them. And wonderful guinea pigs and hamsters, which would make perfect woolen miniatures. And these are from the 60s and 70s. And see how wonderful the woolen miniature design translates into fur as well as feathers, where you can see that wonderful coloring that you'd see on a guinea pig with, of course, his whiskers. Hamster. Best friends. All right. One of the fun things about woolen miniatures if you're lucky, is that you find them still with their price tags on them. And I just love that. Now, I know you can do this in a number of categories, but there's something about the woolen miniatures where you can see how much they cost. So this lovely guy is from the 60s. His tag says, trademark Bloomingdale's, $2. How fun is that? He's, of course, like all wooden miniatures, he's head jointed. Lovely ears, whiskers, beautiful. Here we have a finch. He's also from Bloomingdale's. A dollar thirty. That would have been a good investment. He's got the plastic legs. He's probably from the 60s or the 70s, but he's in great shape. And I don't know, there's just something about the original price tag which really grounds it into a point in time, which I just love. And one of my favorite items, and probably my whole collection, is this F.A.O. Schwartz woolen miniature mouse. And here you see the tags. F.A.O. Schwartz did not put price tags on items until the 60s or the 70s. They put codes, and this code would translate into a price, so people didn't know how much they were actually paying for things. Uh, and the code also suggested where the item was located in the warehouse. So there's a lot of information you can find on the tags, and he's in great condition. All right. I would like to show you also the difference between older woolen miniatures and younger woolen miniatures. And this involves um, a scientific experiment. So we're going to set up our technology right here. And you see here a scale. We're going to press it to zero, and it counts down. This woolen miniature is from about 1980. I want you to see how much it weighs. The scale says 5 grams. Okay. Now what you see here is the what appears to be the identical woolen miniature and this is also from, but this is earlier, this is from the 60's. This one weighs 10 grams. So why I wanted to show you this was to show you not only do the designs look alike, but they really do change in composition over time. The younger one, or the one that was made in, in the early 80s, 
it just, although it's charming, and I love it, and I wouldn't kick it out of bed for eating crackers, it is very fluffy. It just doesn't have the beautiful design, detail, and quality as the one from the 60s or 70s. This is really squishy, and this is really a little bit harder. This one also has a strange tag. This is authentic, like this. Well, the earlier one has the button in the leg, and you can see the difference in the beak and such. So there is a real structural difference between the earlier ones and the later ones. So I'd like to conclude with just a few rarities. As for woolen miniatures, like many of Stice's products, they were produced as exclusives for companies with special designs. And the two that I can think of is the first is a sparrow, which was made for the city of Ulm, which is a city in Germany where I believe Albert Einstein was born. I think that's one of their claims to fame. And the other claim to fame is that the city of Ulm has one of the largest cathedrals, are the tallest cathedrals in the world, and there's a story associated with a sparrow in the city of Ulm, where a sparrow built its nest using tilting a piece of straw in its beak a different way, which allowed him to, to build the nest, which was also um, the, the, the whole idea of, t of turning a piece of wood on its side would help build this giant cathedral. So the Sparrow of Ulm is a very big sort of legacy and a, 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 a one of the, the um, a logo for the city. And Stife created a series of Ulm Sparrows. Stife also created, and I love this little guy, is um, was made for a, a company that makes it's some kind of gel for your legs. Uh, so when you, on the tag, it says, there's some words in German, but I translated them. It says, this particular medication makes your legs feel light as a feather. So this little green bird was created for the pharmaceutical company so you're, to, to uh, symbolize the drug that they made, which apparently helps with varicose veins or something like that. So this is an advertising specialty made of the woolen miniature character. And this is probably from the the 60s or the early 70s. Very cute. So that's very similar to the Raven, but in green. So those are the advertising specialties. And now ending on a very small note, I'd like to show you the smallest woolen miniature in my collection. This is an uncatalogued hummingbird. And this hummingbird is probably three quarters of an inch with plastic wings. And he has a pin on him. And he's just wonderfully so tiny, doesn't have a button. But I wanted to share this teeny tiny specialty with you that I haven't really shared anywhere else. I don't know of another one, but he's quite darling and is a beautiful example of 1970s woolen miniature craftsmanship. So that's what I have for you today. I hope you are in love with these items as I am. As you can see, you can fill a whole table with them and more and more and never run out of space. So it's a wonderful collectible. They look great with dolls. They're great in doll houses. They're great for vignettes. They're wonderful gifts. There's, there's no downside. And I hope you, when you find them in flea markets, online, in stores, on Ruby Lane, wherever you shop, think of them in, as a wonderful new addition to your collection or even a new line to collect. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the convention and Teddy hugs.